When users are building work items into a diagram, they can do it in two ways. They can add work items into individual nodes of the diagram, or they can automatically generate scenarios, use cases, and test cases that could be associated with the diagram. We often recommend users to try automation first to see if that can cover all the requirements needed to elicit from a diagram. Then they can touch up afterwards by adding individual requirements onto nodes if necessary. So let's start with automation. Let's click on the Analysis tab. If we go on to the right-hand side, we see our scenarios, use cases, and test cases based on our process model. We can also see that they are being generated for us. The first scenario shows a successful checkout and a successful payment scenario. The second scenario shows a successful checkout but a non-successful payment. The third scenario represents a user logging in, reaching a checkout screen, aborting the checkout, and returning to the select product screen. Here, we can rename the title of scenario 1. This is a simple pathway. We can say as a user I would be able to pay and have my product shipped. Once we have renamed our title, we can go ahead in the Description tab and alter the description. Before we publish the work item, we will include the description generated by the system. We can also go ahead and select the work item type. Here we are going to select a user story and publish it. We have now made a work item 38161 and it's a user story. We can also see that inside the description, we have a pathway through the diagram as well as a snapshot of that diagram in the description. The users can also go ahead and see that if we go to the links tab, we have a link back to our basic flowchart that we created. But here, the users are not limited to only building user stories and have them automatically generated for you. We can also create use cases based on the process store that has been created. If we go to the Use Case tab here, we can change the title of the scenarios and label them as Primary, Alternate, Exceptional, or Ignore. And once we have labeled it, we can add a title to this use case. Let's say we call it Use Case for Login Process. Once we have named this use case, we can go to the Details tab and configure the details of this use case work item. The Details tab has the narrative of all the different flows. Once published, this is included in the description of the work items created along with the diagram created in the diagram module. A use case work item is being created using the analysis tab of the diagram module. Let's get into the test cases and how we can automatically generate those. When automatically generating test cases, the same principles apply. You have your pathways to the diagram that identify your test cases. You simply have to double click on it and give it a new title. Let's say we call it successful shipment. Once we have named it, you have a new test case published. The step session will have all the test steps configured. Now the user can publish this test case work item. Here we can see work item 38163 is created. Inside that test case we just created, test steps are automatically added to the steps section. If we go to the summary tab in the test case, we see a snapshot of the diagram. We also see the highlighted test case path through it for each use case, test case, or user story. You can find a link to the diagram in the Links tab. You can also find a snapshot of the diagram in the Attachments tab. If we still have outstanding work items that we want to attach to this diagram, we can go to our Diagram tab. The users can link a work item to a diagram work item using any of these shapes. 
Let's go to the Link tab and add a few work items to our payment process. We will go to Add Link. Here we can bring in an existing work item from the backlog, or we can create a brand new work item directly from the diagram module. We will create a brand new work item and link it to the process. Let's select user story and give it the title payment by user. Click on OK. Here we can see that we have a work item that has been created and it is linked to the object. Let's go ahead and select another object to a link work item to. Let's select the checkout process and from the add link option, we can create a new work item. We will call it checkout by the user. Once we have labeled it, hit OK. Now a new work item is linked to this checkout process. The users can also link existing work items to a particular object. Let's click on an existing work item. We can bring in work items using the query ID or title contains fields. Once the work item is available in a search, we can link it to the diagram and individual shapes within that diagram. Now if the users go ahead and click on the canvas, it will show all the work items that are linked to this diagram. If we go to these ellipses and select Link Overlay, this will display which shapes were selected when linking the work items to the diagram. This is how users can link work items to individual nodes as well as the diagram itself. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching.